When Audi's A5 was introduced in 2009, the company quickly sold many of them and became one of Audi's most recognizable vehicles. For 2018, the A5 finally sees a complete redesign after nearly a decade, and with this new model, Audi looks to make this vehicle much more competitive with improving greatly on technology with a host of new driver assistance and infotainment features. However, is the new A5 a worthy choice among entry-level luxury coupes? Well, let's go ahead and find out and take a closer look at this all-new 2018 Audi A5. In terms of styling of the all-new A5, it certainly has a less controversial, more conservative design language, but it does take on Audi's new corporate design, and you'll see that in the front headlights, you have full-on LED headlights, which do look fantastic, by the way. And you can see that it looks heavily related to the Audi Q7, which is their largest crossover, and then unsurprisingly, it looks related to the A4. But the A4 and the A5 share the same platform with each other and it's called a modular platform. Here goes the key fob design for the vehicle. Pretty nice looking key fob. You do have your unlock, your lock to release your trunk and then your panic alarm. This color of the A5 is known as the brilliant black. You also do have smart key access on both doors of the vehicle. Our trim is also the mid trim level, it's the premium plus. But you do have a full on black leather interior and you have your power driver's seat with power recline and power lumbar. Stepping on inside of the new A5 here, as you can see, this is a beautiful interior design and definitely a huge step up from the old A5. But my favorite feature is the new virtual cockpit that you also find on Audi's new redesign models. It's a 12.3 inch screen. And I'll show you guys what it looks like in just a second. But really nice looking cabin. You have push button ignition, just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. What you're hearing there is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, full leather wrapped steering wheel. Coming to your transmission, you'll find a new 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission, and Audi calls it their S-Tronic transmission, but it replaces the previous year's 8-speed. And you just go down for drive like this, up for reverse, push for park, this little button. And when you put the vehicle into reverse, this will display your rear view camera with guidance lines and trajectory. You also have front parking sensors and rear parking sensors. And you can also shift the vehicle manually via the paddle shifters. Let's go ahead and turn on the headlights and the hazards. Let's go ahead and check out the exterior of the vehicle. All windows are fully automatic. Heated exterior mirrors with LED turn signal indicators. And you also do have blind spot detection. With the all new A5 here, there's plenty of new safety technologies available like adaptive cruise control, rear cross traffic alert, lane keeping assist. You also do have a new traffic jam system. And of course, automatic emergency braking. Coming up front, you have LED headlights for the low and high beams, as well as LED turn signal indicators. The all-new A5 here is powered by a revised 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder that produces 252 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. EPA estimates you're looking at 24 in the city and 34 on the highway, which is not too shabby. And all A5s come with Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system. But this 2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder certainly provides a decent amount of power and pretty quick get-up-and-go. And if you want more power, you can go with Audi's S5 model, which packs in a stronger turbocharged engine. 
Competitors of the A5, you have the vehicles in the entry-level luxury coupe segment. This includes the likes of the Mercedes-Benz C-Class Coupe. You also do have the BMW 4 Series and the Lexus RC. The A5 also comes with two different all-wheel drive systems. If you go for the automatic transmission, you get the traditional full-time all-wheel drive with the center differential. Go for the manual gearbox that's available, and it only sends power to the rear wheels only when needed, and that's called the Quattro with Ultra. Coming to the rear, you have LED taillights with LED turn signals, which look fantastic, and you have dual exhaust tips as well as rear parking sensors. your basic power necessities, power windows, power mirrors, and power door locks, memory seat settings for two people. Interior fit and finish in the A5 is impeccable with tight fitting panels and superb materials throughout the cabin. Lots of soft touch materials going on inside of here, especially on the door panels and on top of the dashboard. And build quality is excellent. I mean, you won't find any panel gaps inside of here and everything feels very sturdy. That's typical of a German vehicle and pretty much a luxury car too. Coming to the steering wheel design, not a huge fan of the steering wheel. I just think it looks a little basic, but it does what it needs to do. Um, I just think it looks a little dated even with this all new redesign. You do have your controls for the Audi virtual cockpit. I love this 12.3 inch screen. And you also do have the voice recognition, Bluetooth phone controls, steering wheel mounted audio controls, all that basic stuff here. The steering wheel also does manually tilt and telescope with a decent range of adjustment. Dual cup holders down here, 12 volt power outlet, your main controllers for your Audi MMI interface, which I'll get to in just a minute. And down here, you also find your center console with two USB charging ports and auxiliary input. Auto dimming review mirror with an integrated compass and LED map lighting. Sunroof. I love how you can open the sunroof without opening the shade. That's pretty cool. But of course you can open the shade if you would like. And you have your garage home link. Glove box compartment, lined with felt, very high quality. Tri-zone automatic climate control. You do have your temperatures. And your heated seats, three staged for the driver and the front passenger. and your fan speed level for the climate control, as well as your different zones too. Pretty easy to figure out and very simple to use, and the toggle switches have a nice premium feel to them. Down here we do have your Audi Drive Select, which is basically your different driver selectable modes, which I'll get to in just a minute. Your automatic start-stop system, you could turn that off if you would like. That is basically when you come to a complete stop, the engine will actually shut off to save a little bit of fuel. Then you have your traction control off button and then your parking sensors. And then you can turn off the screen by pressing on this button if you would like. Like I said earlier, this A5 features the new virtual cockpit, which is what you will find on many other of Audi's newer redesigned vehicles, but it looks fantastic. It's all digital here and it's a 12.3 inch screen. And it's controlled by the buttons on the steering wheel. Now, if you click on this view button right here, this will bring up a bigger view of your digital speedometer and then you also do have your tachometer shows you what gear you're in as well as your Audi drive select what mode you're in but you don't always have to have it like that right over here it shows you your vehicle information such as your fuel consumption shows you your short term memory vehicle information such as your average MPG your average miles per hour and then it also shows your long term memory too energy consumers it shows you what's taking up the most energy and right now it's the air conditioning and then you also do have your driver assistance which shows you what driver assistance features are on or off and then your traffic signs too and then to control more of the interface you if you want to go to your different menus just 
click on this button right here. Over here shows your Audi presets and then your stabilization control. Then you also do have your audio. Shows you what audio source is playing or what song is playing. Or what radio station too. And then you have your phone. You can hook up your Bluetooth phone, make a telephone call from here. And then we have your navigation system. What I love about the virtual cockpit is that with the nav, you don't have to go to the main MMI interface here. You could just look at this if you want to see where you're trying to go. And it shows you your points of interest. And you can zoom in and out just by going like this. Really cool. And it has a Google Earth-like type view, which is pretty cool. And I just love it. And like I said, you can also bring up the tachometer as well as the speedometer anytime you like just by pressing on view but overall love the Audi virtual cockpit very useful looks fantastic looks very modern too and they certainly need to put it on all of their new vehicles coming to the main infotainment system and head unit this is the Audi MMI interface and this is their newer head unit here and it's controlled by the dial right here and then the buttons surrounding it but it's pretty easy to use and intuitive once you get the hang of it coming to vehicle this is your Audi drive select you could change your different driver modes you have dynamic individual auto and comfort then vehicle settings which you could change the seats exterior lighting interior lighting or central locking date and time steering wheel button there's lots of settings that you could change here then your driver assistance, like the speed warning, you can set that on or off if you like. Audi presense, your parking aid, Audi side assist, rain sensor. And then your air conditioning, like your auto recirculation, service and checks, like your oil levels, service intervals, vehicle information, tire pressure monitoring. Then you have your sound, many different sound settings that you could change from your treble, bass, subwoofer, balance, fader, all that good stuff. Radio, and then you can change your audio source from here too. You have Sirius XM, AM, FM, all the basic stuff. And then your presets, HD radio on this too, with iTunes tagging. And then your external media devices, such as your auxiliary input, Bluetooth streaming audio, USB port with iPod integration. You also do have an SD card, your CD player, and your Wi-Fi too. Then telephone. You can hook up your Bluetooth phone, have all of your contacts stored on here. It's also pretty cool is that you do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto capability on this too. Then your navigation. You can enter in your destination by voice or you could do it by the touchpad right here. As you can see, the map quality is fantastic. It has still like the Google Earth-like type view, just like the Audi virtual cockpit. Then Audi Connect, which gives you services such as Google Earth, traffic light information, Wi-Fi, audio player, car finder, Twitter. And then your Audi smartphone interface, which is your Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Many different settings that you could change here on the MMI interface, such as the date and time language, display brightness, measurement units, system maintenance. You can check the version of the MMI interface. But overall, really good system here and very intuitive to use, especially when you get the hang of it. And I love how the graphics and the rendering are very modern. I mean, it's crisp and clear quality here. In terms of the way the A5 drives, it feels very similar to the A4, unsurprisingly, since they're based on the same platform, but it does feel a little bit more mature than the last generation, and it feels a little bit more comfortable, like it's trying to compete with Mercedes-Benz as well as Lexus this time around a little bit more. 
but the ride is pretty smooth, very quiet, especially at highway speeds. And the two liter turbocharged four cylinder certainly provides a lot of power for this vehicle, but there's no need for more power. If you want, you could go for that S5 model, which cranks up the horsepower and the torque quite a bit. The seven speed dual clutch transmission certainly never hesitates to shift and it's pretty responsive, but what's pretty nice with the A5 is that you can go for a manual gearbox if you would like. And I love how they still have that option, especially for the enthusiasts. And if you change the different driver selectable modes, like the comfort mode, of course, that's for the everyday use. It's the most comfortable setting. And then you have your automatic, dynamic, and individual too. But I say the sportiest is definitely the dynamic mode. But overall, if you're looking for a vehicle that's pretty smooth, compliant, and provides a decent amount of power the a5 certainly won't disappoint and the steering and the handling while it's not the greatest in the class it does feel pretty responsive behind the wheel and feels pretty precise too i mean you can still throw this vehicle around corners and have a pretty great time with it all right i'm gonna go ahead and shut the vehicle down let's go ahead and check out the rest of the a5 Lots of trunk space here, and the rear seats do fold down just by pulling on these levers. All right, passenger seat with power climb. To get into the rear seat, just pull this up, and you can push the seat forward by pressing on this button, which is very convenient. And you just hop right in. And when you're sitting back here on the A5, not a whole lot of leg room, but it's certainly recommended for small children. You may be able to fit an adult back here depending on the size of the adult. But I love how you can fold just this middle part down if you would like, if you don't need to fold all the seats down. And of course you can fold this section too, and this section as well. And you also do have rear air vents, 12 volt power outlet. Quality back here, the materials are pretty good too. All right. While the all new A5 here isn't tremendously different from the previous model, with its host of new upgrades with its stronger two liter turbocharged four cylinder and its improved technology, it should make the A5 a much more competitive vehicle in the entry level luxury coupe segment. So remember that this is Cameron Birch from Cameron's Car Reviews.